Uh, evening, everyone. Um, or morning, depending on where you are. Um, uh, it's been a while since I did my last video, but, but for those of you who, who looked at it, um, what I was concentrating on was using .NET Core um, on a Mac, um, which I'm quite excited about because I love Mac hardware, but I'm not, um, I'm not a big Windows fan, but I do love .NET, and uh, you know my my job is a C sharp programmer, um, so I always a little bit resentful of having to do PHP and and stuff like that. But with .NET Core, that's all changed and. Uh, it's really quite easy. It's great, in fact. Um, so what we're going to do this time is, I think last time I did a quick tutorial on how to use MySQL. Um, so I'm going to carry on with that one at a later video, but what I thought was quite important is that um, you in this video I want to cover how to actually deploy uh, a .NET app to a Linux server, um, which is really quite important actually, because Linux hosting is really cheap. Uh, but for those of you that have have tried to use Microsoft Azure for you know it's, it can be quite expensive. Um, now me personally, I've got a, a a pretty cheap hosting account with um, One and One. It occurs to me that I probably should have got an affiliate link on this, but but I haven't. But anyway, I've got um, I've got this account with one on one, and I've got uh, a virtual cloud server that uses Plesk, uh, which makes admin really easy. Um, now, if you look at some of the .NET Core tutorials online, um, there's a lot of command line stuff, and I've got to be honest with you, I don't really know. Um, Linux that very that well, um, so I run it with Plex because uh, Plex because it, it's it's really easy for me. But at, at the moment, at least on Plex Onyx, which I think is what uh, one on one use, there there is no way to manage .NET Core um, unless you go down the Docker route, uh, which I'll talk about in another tutorial. But what I'm going to do here is is I'm going to show you how to um, how to host a, a, a .NET Core app using Plesk, um, and there and I have to admit there will be a bit of of SHS in, SSHing into the server, um, but we'll we'll try and keep that down to a minimum. Um, now this is this is all based on Microsoft documentation direct. So we've got the actual .NET um, site open here ready, and we've got we've got this, which again Microsoft host uh, .NET Core on a Linux with Apache. Okay, we're going to reference these sites to a good, to a degree. Um, in order to set everything up. Now, what I've also done is in my Plesk I've set up this new subscription here called jalopycts.com um, that's to do with uh, an app that me and a friend um, developed some time ago now actually called Jalopy Car Troubleshooter but it just so happens that it's a domain name that I had free so uh, this is, you know, this is all standard stuff. There's the Apache settings there, PHP, all of that sort of stuff. Um, now, before we go on, we will connect to the server through SSH. Okay. Now, what you want to do, uh, I've already done it on my server, but what you want to do is you want to go onto the .NET. Oh, by the way, I'm using CentOS uh, version seven, so. This particular tutorial is based around CentOS, but from from my understanding, if you want to use any other flavor of um, Linux, all you need to the, the the process is pretty much exactly the same, but you you'll find that um, it will be different 
different commands potentially, especially when it comes to installing packages. Um, I think CentOS uses yum, whereas Ubuntu uh, uses um, uh, I can't remember what it is, apt-get, something like that. So there will be command differences. Unfortunately, I, I can't really advise you on those because I, I don't know them, um, to be honest. I'm literally just going from this. So what I, what I would say you need to do first off is you need to install uh, .NET on your server. So it's really easy. You just go to... Um, you can get to this by actually typing dot dot net um, and that will get you to this site or you can use this URL. go to get started and then click on Linux and select your variety of Unix and there you go it's got the commands right for right there for you so I don't need to I don't need to, to go any further than this but but stop stop at this bit don't go onto the create app because I'm going to take you through that um, this this creates a console. We're, we're not going to do that. Okay, so as I said, I've already done that. And next, you want to get this page up. Okay. Now again, all we really care about for this purposes of this tutorial is we're going to assume. Well, as you're using Plesk, you'll have that Apache and all that installed already. We just need this bit here, okay? So let's assume that you've got .NET installed. And then we're going to go into this, and we're going to go to Apache and Nginx settings. However, you pronounce that, I don't know. We're going to copy this part of this, and we're going to put it in here, and then we'll put it in here as well. I'm going to put it in here because my site is actually set up for HTTPS because I use the Let's Encrypt thing. Um, now, one thing we're going to do is we're going to change that to Jalopy CTS. You would change it to your domain, obviously. And here we go. Jalopy CTS. Okay. I'm just copy that. And stick it there. Apply that. All in good time. Right. Okay. So what we've actually done then is we've set up settings for a reverse proxy. Now, for those of you who know Plesk and how it works, what basically happens is you have. Um, some httpd.conf files that are written out by Plesk um, and you shouldn't change those um, and then there's some ones in a vhost folder in var www dot uh, something this will make the changes there and you can go and check those yourself if you like but let's just trust that it's been done um, by default .NET Core will start things on port 5000 unless you've put in your code somewhere that you want it to change but we're just going to trust that exactly as it is right there okay um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here I hope I've done this in the right order by the way this is where things get a bit ropey because I don't know Unix very well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to CTS com zero we are so far. Yeah, okay. Now I'm gonna make a directory in here. Uh, we'll just call it Jalopy. Let's just call it that. Uh, CD Jalopy. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do now, again for the purposes of this this document, this uh, tutorial. Um, in the real world, you're probably developing your project with Visual Studio on your local machine. But for now, I'm just going to do this .NET new Razor. Now, the Razor tag on that basically creates a new um, uh, Razor page based project. 
There we go. Um, so if you have a look at that, you've got that. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to publish that. So we'll just go .NET publish. Okay. Now, what that would have done is that would have created a um, self-contained deployment bundle and it will put it in the somewhere in here. Yeah, okay. Um, so. Okay, what did I just do there? Oh, well, I see. Um, okay, so, oh no, not quite. In the published one. Uh, there we go, so there's our published um, project. Next, we need to copy that into the um, HTTP docs of our site. So we'll do that by copy all. Uh, the R is recursive so that it um, gets all the subfolders and what have you. And we're going to put that in, uh, not there, sorry. We're going to put that there. there. Um, B -S .com. HTTP docs. I think that's right. Let's find out. Okay, so we can check this actually. So if we go back to our site here, we should find that um, there's all our files. Now, what we're going to do now is if we go there, what did I say? I should, yeah, okay. yeah. um, you can see that this is not, you know, I'm a mouse man. Oh, what did I type? Oh, yeah. Right, okay, so we're going to run this and we do that by just saying .dll. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> ah, okay. One second. Oh, uh, this because I uh, did one earlier, so uh, we're already using that. Okay, there we go. Right, so if we try that again. Okay, so what I'm going to do so we'll restart the server. So connections are fine. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. 
Right, so we've only got the one domain there. Let's see if we can connect to that again. Okay, now, God willing, someone willing anyway. Okay, so there's our application. Now, by the magic of com, voila! There we go. So that's quick and dirty how to use Plesk to actually get your um, .NET Core application up and running. Now, um, I'm going to end it there for this one. Uh, what we'll do, oh, by the way, um, we'll do this in the next one, but if you just follow this through, what's, what's written in, oh, uh, well, maybe ignore some of this stuff. But if you go into the create a service file, okay, um, you'll need to do this. Now that what that does is that lets um, that lets Apache manage the service. Okay. Now the only thing I will point out is that in here they say that the the .NET execute you know the executable I don't know what you call it in, in Linux but the thing that kicks off .NET is in here. Now, for me, it wasn't. For me, it was in local shared. Um, but the, the point is, is that you want to point it at where your .NET executable is. Um, and I believe there's a, demand, there's a command .NET dash dash info or something. And that will tell you where it is. So you can follow that through. Um, and it will it'll, uh, fill in the information. Or, um, as I say, in my next tutorial... Um, we'll go into that and, and we'll take this a bit further. Okay.